Today, it's a TK8 special edition. The title of this episode is Image Troubleshooting. I'm going to take a scanned 4x5 negative that's really overexposed, and I'm going to show you how we can correct it using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. This is a TK8 special edition. I received this image from Antonio from Italy. It's a scanned black and white negative image. Now, as you can see, it's very overexposed. And what we're going to do today is find out, can I resurrect this image? Can we bring it back to life? Let's find out. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. You can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you'll use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. When you do that, that helps support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. You save money. It helps me out. And for that, I thank you. Now let's see how we can resurrect this image. I tried taking a curves adjustment layer, changing it to a multiply blend mode, and just kept duplicating that layer a bunch of times. And as you can see, doesn't do such a great job. But then I thought, well, let me try something else. Let me go ahead and delete these three layers. I'm on the first layer. I'm just gonna click this trash can on the CX panel once, twice, three times. So then I thought, well, what happens if I come up to luminosity masks and get a mids three, which I always use for balance and contrast, but I thought I'm just going to output it to a curves adjustment and let's put that in a multiply blend mode. I'll just click on the multiply blend mode here. And now what happens if I duplicate that a few times? So let's go ahead. I'm going to click this button to duplicate once. Not bad. And one more time. Okay, it's too dark now, so if I shut this one off and go back to this one, I don't have a lot of nice highlights in here, so I could go ahead and start working on this file if I wanted to, but I wanted to try something else. Let me go ahead and get rid of these three layers. I'll just click the trash can on the CX panel again three times, and I'm back to start. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I always like to start out with a balance and contrast. Now, I didn't hear originally, but I'm thinking, well... Let me go ahead. This is a unique image, which is really overexposed, but let's try it. Let's go to luminosity mass. Let me get my mids three. This is my starting point. I'll put it to a color grading tool and I'll start with the midtones. Midtones are too light. So I'm going to bring the midtones back a bit, maybe somewhere around there. Let's bring in some nice shadow detail or some shadows. I should say, I'm just going to pull this back. Okay. Not there yet, really. Let's try highlights. Let's open up the highlights. And now I'm getting some nice highlights in here, but you know, it's not there yet. So let me try it again. Let me X out of the color grading tool, come back up to luminosity masks, and let's try mids three again. And now let's see what we can do. Let's output it to a color grading tool. And now let's try, well, actually, let me try shadows first. I need to darken those shadows up, okay. Okay, so that's getting better. Let's go with midtones. I can lighten the midtones, but no, I think I need to darken them. Not too much. And now let's go to highlights and see if I can move this to the right. Yes, and keep those highlights looking good. So far, so good. It's getting close. Now this rock is going to be a problem. I'm not going to be able to resurrect it, but let's try this another time. Let's X out of the color grading tool, go back to luminosity mask, another mids three. And let's do it again. I'll put to a color grading tool and let's go with shadows first. I want to darken up those shadows some more. I got to be careful because I don't want to lose all the detail in here. I can go a little bit extra here. Right about there looks pretty good. Let me go to midtones. Let me pull back the midtones a little bit, maybe right around there. And highlights aren't looking too bad, but let's see what happens if I bring the highlights to the right. Yeah, I can go a little bit there because I like what's happening down here in the water. So looking pretty good. Let me see if I can do it another time. Let's X out of here. Let's go back to luminosity mass. Let's do another mids three and output it to a color grading tool. Let's go back to our shadows. See if we can darken up the shadows and maybe right there. That's looking really nice. Let's go to midtones. Let me pull back on the midtones a little bit. 
maybe right around there. It's looking more like a black and white photograph now. Now let's try highlights. Let me move it to the right. And yeah, I like all the nice detail in here. I don't want to blow out this water. If I go to my histogram, as you can see, I'm not blowing out any highlights there. So that's looking pretty good. I might be a little too strong, so I'll just pull this back a little bit. Let's get a look at the histogram again. And I'm on colors. Let me change this to luminosity. But there you can see I am not blowing out the highlights. So I'm really happy with the histogram. So far, I believe I'm moving in the right direction. Let me go ahead and try something else. Let me X out of the color grading tool. Let's go back to luminosity mask. This time, I want to see if I can darken the darkest shadows. Let's try to find a mask. Here's darks one. Here's darks two. What I'm trying to do is just really narrow those darks down. Here's darks three. Here's darks four. And here's darks five. I'm going to try darks five. Let's try that. Let's output that to a curves adjustment layer. And let's switch it to the multiply blend mode by clicking this icon on the CX or combo panel. Let's take a look at the before. Here is the before and now the after. A nice darkening of some really dark tones, and I think that helps. But let's try, let's go back to luminosity masks, and let's try a darks four. And that gets a little more broader area. And let's output that to a curves adjustment. And again, let's use a multiply blend mode for darkening. And let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Now it's too strong. I'm losing some of the detail in here. I don't mind this getting a little dark because it really helps on a black and white image. So let me go ahead and take the opacity the whole way off. And let's just build that up slowly. Maybe to right about there. Here is the before and here's the after. Here's both of those darkening layers off. And here they are on. Now let's see if we can work with the highlights. I think the highlights actually looks pretty good, but let's see if we can add a little more to the highlights. So let's go back to luminosity masks and let's, this is uh, lights one, here's lights two, here's lights three. I think I'm gonna try lights three and let's output that to a curves adjustment. Now for lightning, we use screen. So let's click on screen on the CX panel or combo panel. And let's check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. And I like that. It gives me just a little bit more contrast. And if it's too much, I may back that off just a little bit, maybe to around like 65%. Here is the before and here's the after. Now here's where we started. We started here pretty bad, right? And now we end up here. So I am liking it. Now, Maybe I will see what I can do with the midtones. Let's go back to luminosity masks. I'm going to get a midtones one. I always like midtones one when I want to lighten up the midtones. And I always like to output it to a curves adjustment layer. You could use levels curves. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to adjust the levels here. I just want to bring up the midtones. And to do that, again, a screen blend mode will do really nicely. So let's click on screen. And you can see it really lightens up the midtones. Now that may be too much, so let's take this the whole way off. And let me just start to lighten it up slowly. It's maybe right about there, like 54%. Here is the before, and here is the after. Now here's the overall before, and here's the overall after. And I like it, but I have this rock down here, which I got to do something with it, or else this image will be kind of not usable. So let's fix it. Let me go ahead and close this properties panel. Now to fix this, I can use a clone stamp tool, sample some of these rocks from different parts of the image and try to do the best stamping cloning job that I can possibly do. Am I up for the challenge? Well, hopefully. To use the clone stamp tool, you need a pixel layer. So I'm gonna click this icon on the CX or combo panel. That gives me a blank pixel layer. But before I go ahead and start clone stamping, now I could just do you know, sample different parts, as I said, and start clone stamping over here. But let's use some protection. And to do that, we can get the object selection tool. Make sure you're in the lasso mode. And I'm just going to draw a quick selection around this rock. And hopefully Photoshop will do a good job. Yeah, and it looks like it's done a really good job. I'm going to hide my marching ants by clicking this icon in the CX or combo panel. And now we don't see the marching ants, but we can see that we still have a selection by this selection indicator on the TK multi-mass panel. 
Now I'm going to grab my stamp tool. Just type S on your keyboard. Make sure you're at 100%. And we're just going to start to sample some areas. Like maybe like right here. Hold your option or all key down and sample. And let's just try this. Okay. Now you got to be careful. You have to keep resampling in different areas. I went ahead and sped the video up, but this takes some time, but you just have to keep sampling. As I said, in different areas, you don't want to get repeating patterns, but you'll notice I'm going from different parts of the image. All you really need to do is make it look believable. Nobody will know if you do a good job here, but you'll notice I'll even come back on different areas inside the rock and sample from within the rock I've just painted. And this way I can, you know, look for those repeating patterns and try to get rid of them. But I continue to work on this and, and again, it does take a little bit of time, but it is well worth it. The clone stamp tool can be very effective in Photoshop, but you really got to work with it and just you know, study it out. And you see, I made a mistake there and I made another mistake and I made another mistake and I'm fixing it as I go along. Hey, I'm not perfect here, but after a little bit of trial and error and reworking some of the areas and eventually it ends up looking like it makes sense. After I stopped the video, I went ahead and did a little bit more because I felt I needed to fix a few little things up. Here's the before and here's the after. And now I like it. Now, how about a bit of a vignette? I'll just come to my TK Actions, click this, and I'll just go with a regular vignette, click on vignette, and I'll take the Gaussian blur just the way it is, and I will click OK. Now, that defaults at 50%. It's using a multiplied blend mode with a curves adjustment layer. And here is the before, and here is the after. And I think that really helps it. I might even give it a little bit more. It's a black and white, and it could take a little extra vignetting. I'm going to double click here and do my standard blend diff to protect the shadows. I'm just going to pull this slider over to the right to right about here. And then I'm going to hold my alter option key down and split this just to graduate this off a little bit. In other words, I'm feathering it. I'm protecting my darkest shadows and it's feathering from this point over to here. And I'll click OK. So here is my before the vignette and here is the after. And that's looking pretty good. How about one final thing we can do? Let's try a little bit of split toning with a color grading tool. I don't know if I've ever shown you this before. So this may be something new. I'll click on my color grading tool. Now to apply it to a layer, you have to click the plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the midtone block and just warm up the midtones a little bit just something like right about there, not too much. I don't like to go too crazy on split toning. And I'm gonna go to my shadows and just go a little cool on the shadows, maybe somewhere right about there. Here is the before and here's the after, but just a little bit of split toning. And then if I'm too strong, I can pull this back. I'll take it the whole way off and just build it up slowly, but just apply a little bit of that split toning. Here is the before and here's the after. You can leave that step out, but if you do need to split tone, the color grading tool is a really quick and effective way of doing it. Now let's see where we've come from. I'm going to option or alt click on my first layer. Here's the before. Wow, a big improvement, wouldn't you say? And here is the after. So I think I've resurrected this image. I could also hit my before and after action here. But if you don't have that action, you can just hold your option or alt key down and click on that first layer and see the before and the after. Well, there you go, everyone. I was able to take this image and turn it into this image with the help of the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.